ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ನನ್ನ ಹೆಸರು ನಿಮಿಲಾ ಸೊ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪಿ ಯು ಸಿದ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆದಂಥ ಸೆಕ್ಷುವಲ್ ರಿಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಲಾರಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ಲಾಂಟ್ಸನ್ನು ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸನ್ನು ನೋಡ್ತಾ ಹೋಗೋಣ ಸೊ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಗೈನೀಷಿಯಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫೀಮೇಲ್ ಗೆಮೆಟೋಫೈಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದ ಗೈನೀಷಿಯಮ್ ವಿಲ್ ರೆಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ದ ಫೀಮೇಲ್ ರಿಪ್ರೊಡಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಫ್ಲಾರ್ ನಾವು ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಮೋನೋಕಾರ್ಪಲಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಪಿಸ್ಟಲ್ ಆರ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿ ಕಾರ್ಪಲ್ರಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆನಿ ಪಿಸ್ಟಲ್ ಸೊ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದೇ ಒಂದು ಪಿಸ್ಟಲ್ಲು ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಪಿಸ್ಟಲ್ಗಳು ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿ ಕಾರ್ಪಲ್ರಿ ದ ಪಿಸ್ಟಲ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಫ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಐದರ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಸಿನ್ ಕಾರ್ಪಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಅಪೋ ಕಾರ್ಪಸ್ ನಾವು ಈಚ್ ಪಿಸ್ಟಲ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟಿಗ್ಮ ವಿಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ರಿಸೀವ್ ಪೋಲನ್ ಗ್ರೀನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೈಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಲಾಂಗೇಟೆಡ್ ಸ್ಟೆಂಡರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಿಲೋ ದ ಸ್ಟಿಗ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಓವರೀಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಲ್ಜ್ ಬೇಸಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಕಂಟೈನಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪ್ಲಾಸೆಂಟಾ and it is located inside the ovarian locule locule andre cavity so ee ovarian cavity madhyadalli irutte ee vandu stigma sorry placenta now the placenta consists of megasporangia or the ovules so ee um, illi ide nodi this is the ovary and this is the thalamus and inside this there is an ovule and the placenta and this is the style stigma so now here coming to megasporangium so megasporangium andre the ovule is attached to the placenta by a funicle okay and the junction of the ovule and this funicle is called hilum and each ovule will have one or two protective layers called the integument so outer integument and inner integument anti vidna which is a, which will cover the rest of the ovule except for a small opening at the micropyle end so ee micropyle end nalli enagutte ee ondu aakaradalli irutadu so this end will connect to the pollen tube okay now the chalaza which will lie on the opposite side of the micropyle end will represent the basal part of the ovule so illi aa one micropyle end enide alli baruvanta chalaza ne aa basal part anna torusutane that is the base of the ovule anta and nucellus is present within the integuments and it consists of reserved food now the embryo sac or female gametophyte is located within the nucellus only so this is how it will appear so this is the basal part and here is the micropyle now coming to megasporogenesis so megaspore mother cell mnc will get converted into megaspore by megasporogenesis now the mmc is large and contains a dense cytoplasm and a prominent nucleus and it will undergo meiosis to produce four megaspores coming to female gametophyte in most of flowering plants only one megaspore is functional while other three are going to get degenerated now single functional megaspore will develop into female gametophyte and this kind of development is called monosporic so ili monosporic development andre enu onde ondu egg develop aguvantadu now nucleus of functional megaspore will divide mitotically and become two nuclei which will move towards opposite end forming two nucleate embryo sacs and two more mitotic division will um, ensure leading of the formation of four nucleate and eight nucleate embryo sacs and after eight nucleate stage the cell walls are laid and the typical female gametophyte will get organized now six of the eight nucleotide will get surrounded by cell wall and the remaining two will remain as polar nuclei and they are situated below the egg apparatus at the large central cell okay now three of six are placed at micropylar end and constitute egg apparatus which is two synergists plus one egg cell now synergists will have special thickenings at micropylar end now these are together called the filiform apparatus and it will help in leading the pollen tubes into the synergists now three cells are the at the chalazal end are called antipodal cells and a typical angiosperm female gametophyte is seven celled and eight nucleated are maturity so this is the ovule wherein it is eight nucleate stage okay now coming to pollination so it is a process of transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma and depending on the source pollen pollination can be divided as autogamy which is transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower and autogamy will require anther at the end to lie close now it will also require synchrony in the pollen release and stigma respectivity receptivity sorry so plants like viola oxalis etc will produce two kinds of flowers which is chasmogamous which are exposed to the anther and stigma and clist clistogamous which will not open at all 
at autogamy occurs next is gitanogamy <coughs> so this is the transfer of pollen from anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower in same plant so now genetically it is very similar to autogamy but it will require pollinating agents as well now next coming to xenogamy so it is a transfer of pollen grains from anther of the stigma of a different plant okay so ili one anther in the pollen grain so bere plant in a stigma ke transfer agutte pollination will cause genetically different types of pollen to be brought to a plant now agents of pollination are air water which are ab uh, sorry abiotic agents and biotic agents anta bandaga it is animals pollination by wind it is most common form of abiotic pollination and the plant will possess well exposed stamens at large feathery stigma now pollen should be light and non sticky to be carried easily by winds and wind pollinated flowers often have single ovule in the ovary and numerous flowers placed in an inflorescence it is very common in grass now pollination by water so it is rare in flowering plants except for aquatic plants like the valsinaria and hydrilla so in most water pollinated plants the pollen grains are long ribbon like structures and they are protected from wetting by mucilaginous coverings okay and in majority of water plants like hyacinth and water lily the flowers are going to emerge above the water level and pollination is done by insects now pollination by um, animals majority of flowering plants use butterflies bees wasp for pollination so usually these are the insects which are used for pollination which are used as agents biotic agents and most of insects pollinated flowers are large colorful fragrant and they contain nectar to attract animals for pollination now this is called floral rewards now floral reward can be in the form of providing safe places to lay eggs for example tallest flower which is the amorphous okay and a symbiotic relationship exists between the plant yucca and its pollen pollinator moth okay now the moth is dependent on the plant since moth deposits its eggs in the locule of the ovary of the plant and in return the plant is pollinated by the moth now pollen grains are sticky and they get stuck to the body of the moth and outbreeding devices so repeated self pollination will lead to inbreeding depression so what will happen plants have developed methods to prevent self pollination autogamy is prevented by following ways like pollen release and stigma receptivity will not be coordinated and different position of the anther and the stigma and production of sexual flowers sorry unisexual flowers now ways to prevent both autogamy and gitanogamy is presence of male and female flowers on different plants such that each plant is either male or female it is die 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 species plants and a produce matter and this mechanism is present in several species of papaya now pollen pistil interaction so pollination will not always ensure to transfer compatible pollens so hence pistil has been uh, has the ability to recognize the right type of pollen to promote post pollination events so if the pollen is wrong type the pistil will prevent pollen germination now this interaction is mediated by chemical components of the pollen and the pistil so this pollen pistil interaction is a dynamic process which will involve the pollen recognition followed by promotion or inhibition of the pollen okay and now pollen tube will reach the ovary and enters the ovule through micropyle and through the filiform apparatus it will release into synergids and in this way the pollen tube is going to grow now artificial hybridization and double fertilization artificial hybridization is a method to improve crop yield and in this method it is essential to ensure that right kinds of pollen grains are used and the stigma is pro protected from unwanted pollens so it is achieved by either emasculation which is the anther is removed from the bud in the female parent bears bisexual flowers and bagging now bagging so the emasculated flower is covered by a bag so not to allow contamination of the stigma by unwanted pollen grains now when the stigma of bag flower will become receptive the collected pollen grains are dusted on the stigma and then their flower is rebagged 
Now in female parent is unisexual, emasculation is not necessary. In case the female bud is directly bagged and when the stigma turns receptive, suitable pollen grains are dusted on it so that to allow germination. Now double fertilization. So when pollen grains fall on stigma, the pollen tube will enter one synergid and release two male gametes. So one of the male gamete will move towards the egg cell and it will fuse with it to complete the syngamy to form the zygote. Now the other male gamete will fuse with two polar nuclei and then it will form triploid primary endospermic nucleus which is PEN and this is termed as triple fusion. And since two kinds of fusion, syngamy and triple fusion will take place, this process is called double fertilization and, and it is one of the characteristics of all the flowering plants. So after triple fusion, the central cell will become primary endosperm cell, PEC. Now the primary endosperm nucleus which is PEN will give rise to endosperm while zygote will develop into the embryo. So this is how it is going to happen. Now post fertilization events, so this will include development of endosperm and embryo and maturation of the ovules into seeds and ovaries into fruits. Now formation of endosperm, it will develop before the embryo because the cells of endosperm will provide nutrition to the developing embryo. Now primary endosperm nucleus will repeatedly divide to give rise to free nuclei and therefore this stage of development is called the flea nuclear endosperm stage and cell wall formation will occur next resulting in cellular endosperm. Now endosperm may be either fully consumed by the growing embryo as in pea and beans or retained in the mature seed as in coconut and castor. Now development of embryo. Now the embryo will develop into a micropylar end of the embryo sac where the zygote is situated. Now zygote will give rise to first to the pro embryo and then to the globular heart shaped mature embryo and typical dicot embryo will consist of an embryonal axis and two cotyledons respectively. So portion of embryonal axis above the level of cotyledons is called epicotyl and it contains plumil. The portion below the axis is called hypocotyl and it contains radical and root tip is covered by the root cap. So this is it. This is radical, root cap, hypocotyl, plumil, plumil cotyledons. <coughs> and in monocot embryo, there is only one cotyledon and in grass it is known as scutellum and it is situated one side of the embryonal axis. At the lower end the embryonal axis has a radical and root cap enclosed in the cholerhiza. And epicotyl will lie above the level of stru structure, sorry scutellum and has the shoot apex and leaf primarida which is enclosed in the hollow structures called the coleoptiles. So this is the diagrammatic representation. And seeds and fruits will development of seeds. In last stage of sexual reproduction, sorry, this is the last stage of sexual reproduction in angiosperms. And seeds are fertilized ovules which develop into inside a fruit. And seed consists of seed coat, cotyledons and embryonal axis respectively. And seeds may be albuminous which is endosperm present as in wheat and maize or non-albuminous which is endosperm absent. So it is consumed by the growing embryo as in pea and beans. Now some seeds like black pepper and wheat will have remain remnants of nucellus known as the perisperms. Now integuments of ovules are going to get hardened to form the seed coat and the micropylar, uh, sorry, micropyle will facilitate the entry of oxygen and water into the seed. And as it loses moisture, the seed may enter dormancy or if favorable condition exists, it is going to get germinated. Now development of fruits. So the ovary of the flower will develop into fruit. Now walls of ovary will transform into the walls of the fruit which is pericarp and fruits may be fleshy as in mango and orange or can be dry as in groundnut and mustard. In some plants floral plants other than ovary will take part in fruit formation. They are false fruits like apple and so strawberry. So the thalamus will contribute to fru fruit formation and these are called false fruits as I told you. And they will develop from the ovary, I mean those fruits which will develop from the ovary are the true fruits. And some fruits will develop even without fertilization and they are called the parthenocarpic fruits like banana. Apomexis and polyembryony. So some plants will produce seeds without fertilization, this is called apomexis. And apomexis is a form of asexual reproduction which will mimic sexual reproduction. In some species it will occur 
in diploid egg cell stage and it is formed without meiosis and develops into a formation of embryo without even fertilization. And in some varieties of citrus and mangoes, the nucellus cell, so now the nucellus is going to get divided and protrude into embryo sac to develop into embryos. And in such cases, each ovule will contain several embryos and this condition is called polyembryony. And apomexis is a very important procedure for producing hybrid varieties of fruits and vegetables and it is also used in increasing crop yield multifold.